Hey there, I'm Kim Sorges with Not Consumed Ministries, where we help families grow in faith so they are not consumed by life. Today, I want to share with you a basic plan for homeschool math, as well as some tips and tricks I've learned along the way. Let's start at the beginning. Math should be super fun. Okay, <laughs> if I'm being honest, math is not super fun for me, and maybe it's not super fun for you. Truth be told, I cried all the way through my calculus exam in college. It was a tough subject, but it's a necessary one. And that's where we need to start. You know me, I'm big on homeschool vision, and this is a crucial part of success in your homeschool. So before you begin math, if you haven't already done so, you need to decide exactly why you're teaching this subject. I do that in my organized homeschool planner. If you're not familiar with that, it is the strategy behind your homeschool and you can pick it up at store.notconsume.com. When I first began homeschooling, I challenged myself to come up with biblical reasons why I was teaching everything I was teaching so that I could keep it in the right perspective. And that's what I've written down here. So. I want you to dig in and explore the Bible for yourself and come up with these answers, but I'll share just a couple of mine first to help us to understand creation. That's pretty hard to do if you don't understand the mathematical way that things work together. To help us to see God's perfect order, again, numbers, and then to manage what God has given us financially. We need to be good stewards, not in debt, not filing bankruptcy. We want to teach our kids those skills through the mathematics education we're giving them. Okay, so that's the reason why. Now let's dig into how. Starting in preschool and kindergarten. Now, I am not a big fan of curriculum at this stage of the game. I think your best bet as a parent is to talk about math in a natural way. Have your kids count, subtract, add, divide, multiply, real things, real objects in your house. This happens naturally if you're engaged with your kids. For example, you bake some cookies. Sit down with your kids. Say, hey Leah, how many cookies do we have? Oh, we have eight cookies. Nice. Awesome counting. Now let's divide, use the word divide, those cookies evenly among your siblings. How many cookies are each of you going to get? Now, it's really important that we use those real words and help our kids get used to that kind of language because that's one of the biggest barriers when it comes to math. If we're teaching them the actual words, then when they see them on a math sheet or in a math activity, they already have the experience. It's not foreign to them. Of course, the first time you use the word divide, your kids might not know what you mean. That's okay. You can go ahead and explain it further by giving more instructions. During pre-K and K, your main goals are to learn shapes, colors, number recognition, and how to talk about math and mathematical things. That's really it. One of the tools that we use all the time is actually a tool from Classical Conversations. Now, I don't actually do Classical Conversations anymore, but I did it for years, a long time ago, and I fell in love with the skip counting math part of these CDs. You can get these online without even participating in a community. When I first listened to this CD and they were skip counting, not just twos and fives and tens like we would normally think, but all the way up to 15s, I thought that is crazy. That is totally crazy. But my kids learned it and it helped them tremendously when it came time to multiply and divide especially. So this is a foundation that you really want for your kids. You don't have to use this CD. Of course, you can use any CD, but teach them skip counting, not just twos and fives and tens. If you insist on having a curriculum or have a child who really needs the challenge, I would recommend either Rod and Staff. They have a preschool set that goes all the way through, I believe, kindergarten skills. Or Christian Light Education has some great resources for beginning with just some simple activities like this. Once your child gets into first grade, this is when it's time to move to a formal math curriculum. My favorite is Christian Light Education, or CLE. Now, there's a few things that I love about CLE. One is it's very simple. Two is it's very cheap. And three is it comes in little booklets, 10 of them throughout the year for the child. So it's not as overwhelming as like a large textbook might be. 
But most importantly, the entire goal of this curriculum is to help your kids gain independence. And that is exactly what first and second grade should be all about. CLE is also really strong on math facts, which is super important. I find that a lot of curriculum is very, very weak on math facts. Math facts are absolutely the foundation to math success. If your child does not grasp those, you need to stop, go back, and keep doing it. If you move on and you go into these higher level concepts and your child is still struggling with basic addition and subtraction facts and being able to do those quickly, they will not succeed in math. So we want to make sure that our kids really have a strong foundation in that. Third grade and up is where things get awesome. In our family, we moved to my much beloved, longest running ever curriculum, teaching textbooks. Now, this is actually the old school style. This is the only one I have left. We have moved completely to 3.0 because it's all web-based and that is super important for my family and our particular lifestyle. The reason I love teaching textbooks so much is because it teaches the lesson for me, taking me out of the equation so that I'm freed up to help other kids and it gives the kids the necessary practice without overwhelming them with unnecessary practice. <laughs> so I love that. It's self-grading. They automatically know if they've gotten it wrong so that they don't do an entire math sheet completely wrong, and then you have to go back and say, oh, by the way, you did this wrong. That's just teaching them to do things incorrectly. It's training them to think the wrong way because we didn't catch the mistake in time. I love that teaching textbooks does not allow for that. Okay, let's talk about the four math rules that will decrease your frustration with the subject. Your kids need a 90% mastery or better in order to move on to the next lesson. Why? Because math is all about mastery. Math continues to build. We have to make sure they're mastering everything that they do. Uh, by the way, that means you're going to need to be grading it every single day. That's another thing that I love about teaching textbook. It grades for me. I can print it out. It's all done, which is awesome. Whatever you do though, you need to make sure that you're grading every day. Okay, my second math rule is to use a cheat sheet. I already showed you ours. These actually, they're called math reference charts, not cheat sheets. <laughs> but they actually come from Christian Light Education. What I love about this is it gives kids a point of reference. All right, number three tip for math. Always write it down. Each of my kids gets a math notebook. This is Nathan's math notebook. There's no order to this. It's all just math, math problems, page after page after page after page of math problems. Basically, it's glorified scrap paper. It reminds your kids that they need to write the problems down. They will not be successful if they don't, and it gives them a fun place to do it. Number four, if you're struggling with a concept, so that comes up a lot in math. They need to multiply fractions and they just don't know how to do it. First step is to go back to the lesson where you learned that information the first time. One really cool thing about teaching textbooks is when you're doing the problem, they actually tell you where you first learned the concept so you can go back and listen to the lecture again. I love that feature. But let's say you've gone back and you've listened to it again and you're still not really sure. Google it. <laughs> there are many websites that will help you, that have videos, it will show you a different way to maybe think about or work that problem or that concept and that will really help you help your kids to get over the hurdle. Okay, one final thought. It's called Extra Math. It is a totally free web-based program. You sign up and get your whole family an account and then you have a parent account and each of your kids will sign in daily and they spend about five minutes or so, it's not long, rehearsing math facts. Now there's a lot of programs and apps and things out there that do this, but Extra Math has one, its place in my heart with one major feature, and that is that it's very intuitive. It knows which problems the child is struggling with, and it knows which problems they've already mastered. So you're not spending all that extra time going through flashcards or even things like bingo bugs, which we love, but bingo bugs keeps reviewing the same problems, and that's not really helping them get to where they need to go. Okay, that's it for math. I hope those tips and curriculum suggestions were helpful. We will link to all of the things that I mentioned in this video underneath this video so you can find them easily. Please reach out to me and ask questions. I'd love to come alongside you and encourage you as you seek to teach your kids the order and beauty and amazing things that God has created for us 
through mathematics education. All right, see you next time.